Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Benny. Today we will be reacting to a scary true crime TikTok compilation. Let's watch. Police say that this man killed a woman and posted a video of her dying online. On the 26th of July, police in Nevada received a report of a disturbing video on Facebook. Police were actually able to locate the telephone number of the person who posted the video due to the seriousness of the crime. They tracked the number to a apartment complex in San Mateo. As police did not have a specific address to go to, they had to go door to door around the whole apartment complex. After three hours, they were able to locate a deceased person in one of the apartments. They identified the suspect as Mark Murchikoff and they arrested him. The video that was posted on Facebook allegedly shows Mark stabbing the victim. He callously filmed the victim's last moments of life. Police say that the motive is still unknown. Mark is currently charged with murder. Like Alfred says in The Dark Knight, some people just want to watch the world burn. This is seven-year-old Athena Strand, and on Wednesday, November 30th, just a few days ago, she was abducted from her driveway in Paradise, Texas, and killed by a FedEx driver who was making a delivery to her home. That day, Athena got off her school bus at 4.15 p.m. Shortly after, she and her stepmom got into an argument, and Athena went outside to the driveway sometime before 5.15 p.m. Athena's dad at the time was out of town on a hunting trip. So when her stepmom couldn't find her, she looked for Athena for about an hour before calling 911 to report her missing. An Amber Alert was quickly issued and a massive search was launched using helicopters, thermal imaging, and rescue dogs. Multiple different agencies, including the FBI and over 300 volunteers got involved, but there was no trace of little Athena. But yesterday that sadly changed when authorities located her body during a search in Boyd, which is about 10 miles away from Paradise. This was directly after a tip and digital evidence led them to this FedEx driver. 31-year-old Tanner Lynn Horner, who investigators found had made a delivery to Athena's home at the time she disappeared. Tanner ended up confessing to the abduction of Athena and was quickly arrested. Right now, he's being held in Wise County Jail on capital murder and kidnapping charges. His bond is set at $1.5 million. Athena's cause of death is still under investigation, and according to authorities, Tanner did not appear to know either Athena or her family. Authorities also believe that she was killed within an hour of her abduction. FedEx has since released this statement. Pause to read. This was absolutely senseless, and Athena deserves justice. Yeah, people might call you crazy, but you always gotta keep an eye on your kids. Never know what's gonna happen. Lonnie Franklin Jr., also known as the Grim Sleeper, was an American serial killer who was responsible for at least 10 murders in Los Angeles, California. He earned his nickname the Grim Sleeper because he took a 14 year break between his crimes. By 1986, 15 murders were linked to the Grim Sleeper case. However, it wouldn't be until 2010 that Lonnie Franklin Jr. was arrested for these crimes. Lonnie Franklin Jr. was identified through familial DNA, so what this meant was the investigators on this case took DNA from the crime scenes and they entered it into a California felon database and ultimately identified his son as a match. After identifying his son as a match, they had their eyes on Lonnie Franklin Jr. An undercover police officer actually followed Franklin to a restaurant and pretended to be a waiter. He collected silverware, plates, and pizza crust that Lonnie had eaten from. The DNA that was taken from these objects were able to be tested against crime scene DNA and ultimately Lonnie Franklin Jr. was found to be a DNA match. So on July 7, 2010, Franklin was arrested. And on December 16, 2010, the LAPD released 180 photos of women found in Franklin's home after unsuccessful attempts to identify the individuals who were possibly additional victims. It wasn't until June 6, 2016 that Lonnie Franklin Jr. was sentenced to death for his crimes. Although Franklin was only convicted of 10 murders, it is thought that he strangled and stabbed over a dozen more sex workers in the Los Angeles area. In 2020, Lonnie Franklin Jr. was found dead in his cell while waiting on death row. The autopsy results regarding his death have never been released and we still don't know how he died. Oh, we know how he died. We know. This guy casually strolling into a hardware store for supplies was about to abduct his ex-girlfriend and bury her alive. 23-year-old Tariq Jot Singh asked staff for help before picking up some cable ties, gaffer tape, black gloves and a petrol can and a shovel. 
Filling up his trolley, he headed over to pay in cash for his murder toolkit. He then leaves the store fully equipped to carry out his plan. The next day, he turned up at his ex-girlfriend's workplace, but that wasn't the first time he'd done so. After she broke up with him, Jasmine Kaur actually reported her ex to police five weeks prior, telling them of his possessive nature and that he'd been stalking her at work. Tariq Jot hadn't taken the breakup well, threatening to end his life if she didn't take him back. But his thoughts of death soon turned to murder. Turning up at the care home of where she worked, he blindfolded Jasmine and tied her up before putting her in the boot of his car. He drove four and a half hours out of Adelaide to the Flinders Ranges. It's there where Tariq Jot buried Jasmine alive. Police say her final moments must have been full of terror. During the police's investigation into what happened, Tariq Jot denied having any involvement in her murder, before later changing his story to one that painted him as the victim. He claimed Jasmine had killed herself and asked him to bury her. Police didn't believe him. This week he was found guilty of murder and sentenced to almost 23 years in prison. He faces deportation back to India after that. Be careful who you get involved with, people. Be careful who you get involved with. Take your job. Can you let them take your job? Did see John die? What's that? You mean you want to see John, the little one? The I want to see. <laughs> we, had, we, we had some value, but now we don't have any value. Well, I don't see it like that. I mean, I feel like that as long as there's life, there's hope. That's my faith. Well, come everybody dies. Hey, Christine, without me, life has no meaning. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys don't know the history of Jonestown, I suggest you look it up. It's pretty sad. Do not watch this video unless you have a very strong stomach. This case is truly sickening. On August the 31st, 2019, Margaret Sumney was unreachable. Her family knew something was wrong. They tried and failed to get hold of her for two days before notifying police to ask them to do a welfare check. When police went to her house in Pennsylvania, what they discovered was horrifying. They found shattered glass all over the floor and blood smeared on the walls. They found the 67-year-old's body in the bath. She'd been beaten to death. The autopsy revealed that she died from blunt force trauma to the head. Police interviewed her son, David, who initially denied having anything to do with her death. However, police searched his phone and found absolutely disgusting images. They uncovered 277 sickening pictures, including selfies of David with her body, his face smeared in her blood and doing a thumbs up pose. Police also discovered that David was in possession of his mum's jewelry and several blank checks. He also had a record of previously assaulting his mother twice and attacking his now deceased father once. The same year as his mum's murder, he allegedly waterboarded and strangled his ex-girlfriend in an Atlantic City hotel. It's reported though that he just slipped through the cracks in the police databases, allowing him to go on to offend again. He was soon arrested and it was found that when he'd committed the murder of his mother, he'd taken a large amount of Adderall. His defence argued that he had diminished responsibility due to his substance and alcohol use. Originally, he was facing charges of first-degree murder and abuse of a corpse. However, due to a legal loophole, he entered a guilty plea, so he would only be charged with third-degree murder. He was sentenced to 20 to 40 years in prison. Terrifyingly, as he's now been in prison since 2019, and due to his good behaviour behind bars, he could be released in just 17 years. That should be a life sentence. This man won a million pounds, but completely ruined his life. This is the true crime case that shocked the UK. Prior to 2001, Charles Ingram and his wife were living a fairly normal life with their three children. On the 9th of September, he became a contestant on the very popular UK TV show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? His wife Diana and her brother Adrian had both been contestants recently and actually won £32,000. Charles was finally in the hot seat and ready to earn some money for himself. However, things didn't end up going to plan. On the first day of filming, he'd actually only managed to reach the £4,000 mark. Now, fans of the show know that throughout the programme, you move through monetary increments and you are allowed a limited amount of help throughout. You're able to use a total of three lifelines throughout your time on the show. These are 50-50, phone a friend and ask the audience. Now, when filming commenced on the first day, Charles has actually already used two of these lifelines. 
He wasn't anywhere near the million pound mark yet. The producers of the show admitted that they were quite dismissive of Charles and they never expected him to get much further. On the second day though, despite everyone's doubts, Charles started progressing through the rounds. Although on many occasions he admitted to not knowing the answer, he was able to make several seemingly completely accurate guesses. He finally reached the million pound question despite everybody's doubts. Again, after admitting to not knowing the answer at all, he gambled on the correct one. In front of the cameras, he seemed elated to have won, but behind the scenes, things were very different. Cameras panned to Charles's wife, Diana, in the audience, and she struggled to be even smiling at her husband's new millionaire status. The production team started to get very suspicious, and there was even rumours that the Ingrams were actually in the dressing room arguing after he'd just won a million pounds. Producers actually were so suspicious that they decided to search Charles after his win. They were looking for any devices on him that might explain sort of the odd behaviour that he'd been exhibiting. On his person, however, nothing was found. That's when the team started reviewing the video footage of the programme. Now, there was actually a live studio audience at the time of filming. They figured out that Charles was strategically reading out each possible answer for the questions and then pausing. When the correct answer was read out, a cough could be heard from the audience. It was discovered that the cough would usually come from a member of the audience called Tequin Whittock. He was actually another contestant on the show, and at one point another cough came from Diana. The matter was handed to police and the three were charged with procuring the execution of a valuable security by deception. All three were given prison sentences, suspended for two years. They were all fined and ordered to pay the prosecution and defence charges. They all still do maintain their innocence to this day. Interestingly, in 2010, Charles actually had an accident with a lawnmower and lost three of his toes. Yikes. That's karma for you. Well, guys, that is the video. Thank you for joining. And as always, like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.